And we are just one month away from the start of the school year, so worries are growing among parents as the semester approaches. What will school look like? Will families and teachers be kept safe? News 2's Sophia Desasur took those questions and more to the state capitol for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with State Superintendent Molly Spearman. Virtual classes, mandatory masks, plexiglass dividers, and teachers wearing face shields, all possibilities for the 2020-2021 school year. Yes, things will be different, and they need to be different. I sat down with State Department of Education Superintendent Molly Spearman, who says the Accelerate Ed Task Force created guidance and recommendations, but the ultimate plans will be decided by districts. I don't believe that directive needs to come from Washington, D.C., and really not even from Columbia. That needs to be decided in the local community where it's best, where folks know the spread, they know the needs of the community. A letter released Monday from three teacher advocacy groups addressed to Governor McMaster details concerns about how districts will implement the department's recommendations. We're just concerned that maybe districts throughout the state won't have those same standard operating procedures for health and safety, and we want to make sure that all of our teachers and students are as safe as possible. Leanna Rossi Potter is a teacher at Wando High School and a representative for SC for Ed, one of the groups behind the letter. She says it's difficult to know what to prepare for this close to the school year. I don't want people to think that teachers are just not wanting to work because I see a lot of that on social media. Uh, we, we want to, but we want to do it in the safest way possible for all people, students, teachers, and families. A metric system created by DHEC for the Department of Education ranks the threat of the virus for each county on a low, medium, and high scale. Berkeley, Charleston, and Dorchester County are all ranked as high. If classes do return, mandatory masks, low capacity bus transfers, and in classroom meals will all depend on that marking. Spearman says she hopes districts decide to put choices in the hands of parents. I listen to all the experts, but my main goal, number one, is that students are safe and that parents in South Carolina do have an option on how their child will receive instruction in the fall, either virtually or face to face. Districts need to release their final plans within 20 days of the start of the school year. But keep in mind, some school districts like Charleston County are already considering pushing their start day back. To listen to a response to federal pressure to reopen classrooms or how the department plans to pay for the costly changes, watch my full interview with Spearman. It will air on Thursday at 8 p.m. Reporting in studio, Sophia Desasor, Count on Two.